Do you have a dead or dormant Instagram account? You know, you set it up with your art some time ago and you've either stopped doing what you're doing or you got totally disillusioned with the Instagram algorithm. You found you weren't getting anywhere and so bit by bit by bit you've pulled away and you've not done anything with it. And now you're thinking to yourself, okay, I perhaps would like to start posting again. I want to use Instagram. Do I A, try and revive, is it even possible to? Do I try and revive that old account? Or do I scrap that and start again? So in this video, I want to share with you how I have brought back to life really quickly an Instagram account that I'd not touched in over two years. But not only that, I'm doing something slightly different and I'm using that account. Now, I'm gonna give you, how many tips? I'm gonna give you, oh, 12 things that I've done that I really believe have made the difference and meant that I've gone from nothing and no activity to regular engagement and regular activity on the account and growth as well. Um, stay right to the end because you will by the end have a definite answer whether you should um, actually revive your old account or start a new one. In case we haven't met, I'm Sophie, teacher, coach and mixed media artist, enjoying sketchbooking and currently on a one year daily sketchbooking challenge. Now on this channel, you'll typically find art business related videos helping you to set up and grow a successful art business. But as I'm doing sketching, I'm also sharing videos on sketching and art practice. And as I go into 2024, there's gonna be a real mixture of business and art. So if you love both those things, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of the forthcoming content. Okay, today we're talking about marketing, marketing on Instagram, business growth via Instagram, and of course, how to revive that previously useless Instagram account that you'd abandoned, not looked at in a really long time, but now you're thinking, hmm, do you know what? It's got my username, it's got the perfect username, I perhaps would like to revive it. So I'm just gonna share what I did personally to bring my account back to life. I'm not gonna guarantee that if you follow exactly the same steps, you'll have the same uh, result, but you could have an even better result. Wouldn't that just be great, right? If you did a bit more of the things I did, you'll get a much, much, much better result. And as I said, if you stay right to the end, you'll know 100% whether you should be reviving your old account or starting a new one. All right, so the very first thing I did, I got really, really clear on my audience. Who is it that I want to be following me? Who is my audience and why should they follow my account? What am I going to be sharing? What am I going to be talking about on that account? And then the second thing I did was alter my bio to reflect the first thing. Now, quite often people set up and it just says, name, artist, you know, I love to paint. And it's like, this is not gonna help you at all. Instagram is an algorithmic tool, it's an SEO, search engine optimization, it's got all of that. You've really got to think about who is that audience, why are they going to follow me, how can I summarize what I'm doing, what I'm offering and put that in my bio, yep, using as many keywords as you possibly can. Now you can keep altering that and honing it and refining it, but those were the first two things I did. I also changed my bio photograph, just updated it. Then I went a little bit further on the bio and I changed my highlight covers. I don't know how important that is, but I just wanted a slightly different look. Then the next thing I did was I updated the links. So I had some old links that weren't relevant anymore, that um, didn't work, all the usual classic mistakes. So I really thought about that audience and what it was they might actually like to look at, what they will find benefit from, and I added links to those things. I actually use Linktree, there are lots of other platforms out there, but you can do an awful lot on the free platform. I don't know, maybe do the pro one, I don't know what the benefits are, but I use the free version, it's good enough. You can also make a page on your website and use that page as well. Then number four, this is critical, now this is about content. So I found a way that enabled me to have content that I would post every single day. And you know what I'm gonna say because this is my art account. I started the daily sketching challenge and I did it for a few reasons. Please see my previous video that I will link up here. That's one month in and what I've learned. 
one of the things is it's given me Instagram content and I knew it would give me Instagram content and I would knew it would give me content every single day. I didn't have to think about what to post. I didn't have to come up with some strategy of what to post. I simply had my routine. I did a sketch in my sketchbook. I took photos or video or time lapse it. I did something with it and every day I posted that content. So I'm not saying you have to do um, something like that, but you need something that will easily give you content. And it could be anything. It could be that you're going to, I don't know, you, you perhaps are an urban sketcher and you're out every day or you paint outside, so you're doing that every day. Or you have a, a studio that changes all the time or you run workshops. It needs to have something where you can easily have content to post every day because a big part of revi reviving an old account is the consistent posting. At least one a day. I actually did twice a day at the beginning just to get the content rolling. The fifth thing I did, and I almost did this from the get-go, I think I even did it before I posted the first new post, and that was I engaged with people, people that I wanted to continue a conversation with, people I thought these are great people to come and might like my content so they're people I knew, artists I knew, people that I wanted to be involved in. And I just saw it as having virtual coffee with people. I just really loved it. It was chat, 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 whether that was in the DMs, whether that was commenting underneath. I got chatting. I was engaging morning, noon and night. And I actually believe now that it was the engagement more than the posting that really revived my old account. Number six, I did plus one stories every single day. What do I mean plus one? Minimum one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, as many stories as you possibly can do. At the beginning, I was probably doing five plus, six plus. It's quite a lot of work. It's a photo here, it's a video clip there. But you know what, if you've decided that Instagram is gonna be the way you're gonna market your art business, then you wanna put everything into it. And you just need to stay mindful. Here I am working, oh, I'm out and about, I'm going to an art shop, quick, photo, photo, video, because later on I can use that in a story. I went to this art shop, bought these art materials, I'm back in my working space. Here's a cup of coffee next to my notes or whatever I'm gonna be doing next. So you wanna stay mindful and you want to collect loads and loads of short video footage and I'm talking just a few seconds right just a few seconds and of course photos and then here's the next bit that seemed really important at the time but at the moment I think we're all having a bit of a hmm moment on the reels I try to make as many reels as possible so I think I set myself to make four four out of the five posts or six posts at reels so over 50 percent of the content reels now i made them really simple and um, they haven't done amazingly but they still brought me in new followers and what's really nice is instagram will say hey you got this new follower from this reel you got this new follower from this reel and this is really important for growth right because reels go out to people who are not following you and it's easier to attract in new people so reels was a really good strategy even if it's not got your million viewers it's still being viewed by people who are not currently followers so at the moment a few people are complaining that reels are nose diving so I'm sure that shortly we'll have the answer to that and we'll be able to fix it I'm still putting reels in the mix as much as possible then number eight after a while I had a look at my very very green statistics that were like up arrows up up and at one point I had something like a 18 1.8 thousand 1800 percent growth I mean it was huge at the beginning it took off like a rocket it's very interesting because I didn't think in a million years that was going to happen um, I then decided to look at my insights to see what content was resonating what was working what were people engaging with and so, you know, the effort was to try and do more of that, obviously. Then number nine, try and use, and I, I'm probably guilty I don't do this enough, try and use as many uh, features that Instagram offer as possible. There are so many things that you could do with Reels that I haven't really experimented with yet. So those of you who are really good with video or you use Reels or you use TikTok, you'll be able to really um, use that to your best advantage. So you could hone in on that bit and that's something that I'll do for sure going into next year.
Then here's the piece that is perhaps going to be a bit of a head scratcher for some people, but you know, it is a bit more of a search platform now, Instagram. So what does that mean? That means if you use search engine optimization, SEO, keywords, words that your audience might be looking for in your copy, in your reels, in your live videos, if you're doing live videos, I mean, most importantly in your copy and of course in your tags, you are more likely to be found. So I was scrolling through the other day and I see quite a few people post a lovely photo and they write three words underneath it. And you are missing out on so many more people who would see it if you'd write a chunky piece of content with as many keywords naturally in there. So it's quite easy for me. I make a bit of a description of the sketch. I list out all the materials I'm using. I mention the companies that I'm using them from. That is also a really important strategy to do. And if I've done a piece that's completely um, one materials, I will tag the company in that post as well, just to start to get out in front of more people. The number 11 is to use relevant hashtags. There's no point for me using hashtag sketching because it's got I don't know how many million posts attached to it. So you want to find a variety of, of hashtags with you know the thousand to ten thousand, ten thousand to a um, hundred thousand. It's something where you are more likely to have your content seen. You want to make sure that those hashtags are real describers of what you're posting. So I think avoid the, I've got my 30 hashtags, I'll copy and paste them on every post. Instagram doesn't like that very much. So really think about what is this post about? Is it in a location? Is it of a specific topic? Is it using specific materials, a specific process? Take the time to find the best hashtags for that specific post. Yes, it's going to take time, folks, but you know what? This is building your art business. And if you're getting your old account off the ground from nothing, then that's what you want to be doing, right? So number 12, you're all going to know it. It's commit to the routine. Now I'm going to put my hands up and say, I've got a lot of personal stuff going on at the moment and I haven't managed to maintain everything on that list. I've maintained the stories, the posting daily, some hashtags, some content, but some of the engagement has dropped. The amount of stories has dropped just because I've got other stuff going on. I will be picking that up in the new year. And I know that now I have the strategy. I'll just get back on it again. So I'm saying for you, if you want the bigger results, then you've got to be doing all of that daily until you build that account to the point where your fans are going to love your content, no matter whether you've got three hashtags or 30 hashtags, whether a long description or no description, right? There's a few other things that you can learn to do as well, but I figure those 12 things is enough for now. Okay, so by now you really want the answer to that question. Should I be digging up my old account and reviving it, or should I be deleting it and starting again? I think by now you've probably got the answer to this, but for me, it's very, very definitive. A, you stick with the account if. What you're gonna be posting is the same sort of content. So for me, obviously I was painting paintings, but they were large abstract or semi-abstract paintings. Now I'm, I'm posting sketching. So I'm still in the painting arena, I'm still in the art arena. And if your audience is the same. So my audience predominantly was artists, is kind of what happens. Um, and actually my chosen, artist, my chosen audience right now is artists too. So that was a great match, right? So on the flip side of things, when to really delete it and start again is if neither of those things are a match. So previously you've done painting and now you want to offer, I don't know, gardening services, right? You stopped your art business, but you think, oh, I've got a thousand followers or 2000 followers. Maybe I can let them know creative gardening, right? It's completely different. So 100% what's going to happen is you post to that audience, they're going to now see gardening, even if it's been a really long time gap, they're like, who is that person? What is that account? And they're likely to unfollow you. Same goes with if you post the same sort of content, but you've completely changed the audience. So you're a watercolor painter, painter and you want to um, perhaps pick up watercolors, but you want to offer watercolor classes and your audience now is people who want to learn to paint rather than people who want to buy original artworks. So now you're talking about watercolor classes and your audience again looks at it and goes, I'm not interested in watercolor classes, I want to buy paintings. So they go and unfollow.
Now what happens here is Instagram sees that what you're posting now results in somebody unfollowing you. And then what's gonna happen is they're gonna rank you right down there. This person is not posting content of any value to the audience because the audience is unfollowing. So if you're in any doubt about this, please post a question below this video or send me a message on Instagram um, and just say, this is my account, this is what I'm thinking of doing. But the rules generally are same sort of content, and same audience, go for it. Different content, different audience, start again, all right? That's basically what it is. If you want to learn a little bit more general tips and tricks on Instagram, I will put a video on screen now where you can watch that here as well. Now, I put my hand up, I'm not an Instagram expert. I just know what has worked for me. I've observed and know what works for others as well. And like a lot of us, I'm always learning. But if you want to do what I've done, then follow my strategy and let me know how you get on. Don't forget to give this video a like if you found it helpful, because it really helps to push it out and help other people to see it as well. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.